Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's video. Now if you didn't already know, this is a two-part video. So if you haven't seen part one, I recommend going over and watching part one, where I received an email from a Muslim man claiming that this video will just shock me and that these animals are submitting to slaughter and there's no fear and, and you know, just making very far out there claims. But this video will still make sense uh, without watching part one. It will just make more sense if you've seen part one. But uh, I do believe this is the more important video because this is the video where where the man actually goes and slaughters the animals and it actually proves my point to a T. So yes, you can enjoy this video, but I do recommend checking out part one so you can see the full context. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy part two. Actually, the animal have a choice. If he chose to submit to the word God, only then the, the slaughter would take place. If he choose not to submit, the slaughter would not take place and the animal will be sent back to the herd. It's just an insane argument. I mean, use that for a human, use that for, you know, any animal, a dog, your neighbor's dog. dog. If, the, if the dog submits, if it's a, it's a well-trained dog, then it's submitting to be slaughtered, obviously. It's not submitting for any other reason. This is the only reason animals submit is to be slaughtered. Um, it just, it, it's an insane argument. And then to say, like, using God's name, using this prayer exonerates you from the crime of cutting an animal's head off is just another level of delusion. We showed you outside the submission of the animals. Now we're going to show you the actual slaughter. Okay, so before we get into the actual slaughter part, I want to talk about the RSPCA, which isn't even a vegan organization. They don't protect animals. They approve their slaughter. They approve their the animal exploitation. They approve Western slaughter, you know, bolt gunning of, of cows, electric baths of chickens, electric stun and stab of uh, pigs, gas chambers, um, macerating of uh, one-day-old baby chicks in the egg industry. It's just far from an ethical organization. They won't even approve halal slaughter because evidence clearly indicates that slaughter without pre-stunning can cause unnecessary suffering. A large cut made across the neck of a conscious animal would result in very significant pain and distress. Before the animal loses consciousness, so around 5 to 7 seconds for sheep, 22 to 40 seconds for adult cattle. I've seen adult cattle have their throats slashed. Some of them take longer to bleed out than others. Slaughter without pre-stunning is unacceptable and the government should repeal the current exemption. Now, I think slaughter with stunning is unacceptable because I, I don't want to be shot in the head. But, you know, would I rather be shot in the head before having my th throat slashed open? Probably. I think I'd rather be out cold before my throat gets slashed open. That doesn't mean shooting someone in the head is okay. Just because halal might be worse in terms of suffering, it doesn't mean that... Western slaughter is fine. They're both bad, you know, so don't think I'm just criticizing halal slaughter here I'm criticizing all needless slaughter of animals So here we go another submissive animal, you know One of the very important rules of authentic Islam, Islamic slaughter is for the animals to come in inside the slaughterhouse is individually. The purpose of that for the animals not to be able to see each other being slaughtered or to see the knife before slaughtered. This is very important. It would really make them very nervous to see each other or see the knife before slaughtered. These animals were actually put here by God to be slaughtered, but it's against halal practice to show the animals being slaughtered in front of each other. Now, if God created these animals to be slaughtered, they shouldn't be afraid of being slaughtered. That doesn't make any sense. Like, it's completely contradictory. These animals either want to be slaughtered, they're either submitting to be slaughtered, or they're afraid of the knife, and they're afraid of watching other animals be slaughtered because it puts too much fear in them. Which one is it? This guy is ready for anything to be done to him, and he's not nervous, he's not resisting. They should have an instinct to want to be slaughtered, like you're claiming. The only reason they're submitting is because they've got an instinct to be slaughtered, they're, they're, they're submitting to God's word. No, show them the knife. This guy who sent me this email made the claim that animals understand and are willing to be sacrificed with no fear. Now, if they understand that and are willing to be sacrificed, why can't they see the knife and why can't they see their friends be slaughtered? I'll tell you right now, I know exactly why. Because they don't want to be slaughtered. If they see their friends get slaughtered, they're going to be terrified. They don't want to die, okay? They don't want to die. Now, if God created these animals to not want to die, why would you kill them? And to give them a drink of water. It really makes a great bond between the slaughter and the animal and it will promote to a riskful slaughter. Okay, so I want a drink of water before you slash my throat open violently with a sharp knife. It will just make me bond with you so much more. I'm sure this animal is just really looking forwards to a drink of water before you slash their throat open and they drown in their own blood. Oh, 
Doesn't look very submissive. No, no, remember, you gotta be slaughtered. This is horrible. To only slaughter the animal once he comes to the point of submission. He's relaxing like this because he is answering the call of Bismillah Allah. So he's covering one side so that the animal can't see the knife. Only two fingers. Only then you can slaughter the animal. Two finger rule. So if you hold an animal's head up like this and they submit, that means you're allowed to slaughter them, obviously. Wait until this point takes place. It's interesting how he shows the cut, but he doesn't show the animal suffering, thrashing after the cut. Now this animal is going to have pain, they're going to have blood dripping out, they're going to be losing consciousness, and after this cut, they're going to be filled with adrenaline, which is fear. The animals have no fear, but if you got your throat slashed open and you felt like you're going to die, are you telling me you're going to have no fear? Are you telling me these animals aren't going to have no fear? I've seen animals have their throat slashed open, they're terrified, and they're violently thrashing in their last moments. There's been many exposés on halal slaughter. Um, the animals are thrashing after they've had their throats cut. The animals can see each other, which is not what this guy's doing. But even in the best case scenario, they're going to be scared of dying when they have their throats slashed open. Having your, yourself cut, having your nerves cut, it hurts. It puts you in pain and there's blood dropping out of your neck. You can't breathe. They're going to be scared. So basically, all of your nonsense points here that no fear... Good health and treatment is nonsense. It's not good treatment to slash an animal's throat open. So they might be in good health. I'm going to give you one. They might be in good health. And they understand and are willing to be sacrificed. That is nonsense. That is absolutely nonsense because he hides the knife from him. He has to close their eyes. He has to hold them down. This is just what you tell yourself to make yourself feel better. <laughs> Another one submitting. More water. Give him some water. That, that might have helped them. Absolute nonsense. That one obviously doesn't want to be there. The main wisdom and the purpose of facing Mecca once you do the slaughter is for the slaughterer to be observing God as if he's watching him. God can see all things, can't God see all things? So it doesn't matter whether they face Mecca or not. I mean, and if the animal's submitting, God should be able to see all things. This is just an old story that's been passed on through people and like it is in, in no way based in any evidence. If the animal accept and ready for that sacrifice that he is being called upon, then the slaughter takes place. If he's not, then he's released. How the hell do you know that animal's ready to be sacrificed? The animal's just lying there with their eyes closed while you're on top of them. They didn't know what's about to happen. And I'm almost certain this animal was terrified. Like, they're in a little room. Like, you know, you're kneeling on top of them. They haven't been in this room before. I mean, if you showed them the knife and you showed them a friend about to be slaughtered, they wouldn't be willingly sacrificed. That is nonsense. Do you understand how insane you sound? You, you can't show them being slaughtered to each other. You can't show them the knife. You just have to... Make sure they can't see, submit them, and of course, they're openly wanting to be slaughtered. It's just, it's just pure insanity, like. Look, if, that, if the animal saw that massive knife, do you think they're going to be like, oh yeah, cut my neck with it? So as an editor, I know what he's done there. You know, he's cut the clip right after the animals had their throat slashed. He doesn't show the, the suffering, the thrashing, and the violent blood squirting everywhere, which is what happens with Halal Slaughter. I want to tell you that this one is a very adult, strong animal. So we might take a little bit more time to get him to the submission, and the position has to be very comfortable for the animal first, so he can cooperate with me and I'll be comfortable to give him a good slaughter. Okay, so this is an, an older animal, like a little bit wiser, a little bit smarter than the younger animals, a little bit less submissive. Let's just see the older animals, how they act. You know, as they're older, they should be more willing to be sacrificed. They should know like, okay, God has put me here to be sacrificed. That's my instinct to be killed. Animals are and he's happy to go. I don't want to live uh, anymore. I definitely want to be sacrificed. An older animal should know that even more. As you get older, you, you should know your journey a little bit more. You should know your purpose a little bit more. So let's just see if this holds true with this animal. What's going on? What's going on? Don't want to be sacrificed? What's going on? He should know. He should know his purpose, this animal. Like, this is just ludicrous to me. Like, the reason I'm speaking sarcastically is because it is ludicrous. I mean, I know this is a serious topic, 
Um, I don't want to see the animal be slaughtered either. But people are so delusional. They make up stories to try to justify it. I mean, it's the same as the humane slaughter nonsense uh, we're told in the West. This is just a religious version of it. You know, God put these animals for us to eat. They, they're, they're completely submissive to us. They're just here for clothes and for meat. You know, we have plant-based foods. I don't know why you don't choose the plant-based foods. It's nonsense. You don't need to kill these animals for any reason. Look at this. Needs two people. The animal's struggling. Obviously wants to be slaughtered. Nonsense. Blood all in the... Look at the grates. There's blood all down there. And here's the magic water. It must make the animal feel like, oh yeah, thanks for the water, mate. I'm bonding with you. Look at the water bonding. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. He's calling this animal baby like like it's his child and he cares about this animal. He's holding pretty tight. He's holding pretty tight. That animal is not submitting to you, mate. You know, feeling for the jugular vein. Horrible. Horrible. The animal struggling in pain. You know? I mean, I want to hear his final justification to this, but this is just horrible violence. Um, anyone with a conscious mind and any sense whatsoever can see that these animals are not submitting. They don't actually know what's going on. They're so vulnerable. They're like innocent children. Yeah, they're not as intelligent as us. They, they really don't know what exactly is going to happen. But, you know, just because they submit does not mean that they're submitting to slaughter. They could just be frozen with fear or you're so dominant they're afraid of you. No matter how merciful the procedure is. Merciful? They didn't even need to die. I know that the scenery is very powerful. The slaughter scenery is a very powerful scenery. Powerful? It's horrible, horrific, violent slaughter. It's murder. There's blood everywhere. It's disgusting. Most of the animals you slaughtered, you didn't even show us how much they suffered after you slit their throats. Whether they thrashed around, which is what usually happens. I've seen this happen before. But it's a necessary act for this meat to reach your table. It's a necessary act for the meat to reach your table, yes. But having meat is not necessary. So, what's your point? In no religion does God say you must eat animals. You must exploit and kill animals. To be a Muslim, you must kill animals. Nowhere is, that's why there are Muslim vegans. I just don't understand why you'd go to all of this work to try to make sure the animal, you know, wasn't in distress, completely submitted, you know, when you can just eat plants anyway and still be a good Muslim. I want you to appreciate the sacrifice that these animals had to endure for us to really have that meat and always be thankful to God for the blessing he gave us and always promote merciful slaughter and humane treatment for the animals. Like, the only merciful slaughter is euthanasia when an animal is suffering and you can't help them, so you have to take their life from them. Because having them live through that suffering is more unethical than actually taking away that suffering. And it can never be humane to slash an animal's throat open. That is murder. I want to assure you, only lucky animals are slaughtered here. Lucky animals? No. Lucky animals live at sanctuaries where they'll never be slaughtered. The animals that slaughtered with God's name mentioned upon them, they are very proud for them to fulfill their mission as a true blessing for us as a human. These animals are proud? So you're reading their minds now? Like, you know how proud these animals are after they have their throats slashed open? They're proud that they were sacrificed to God? They didn't look proud. They looked terrified and they looked like they were bleeding out their neck. And for us, in return, that mentioned God's name for that blessing that they gave us. Versus all the animals that were slaughtered without hearing God's name. Yeah, because it makes a huge difference to the animal that they heard God's name before they were slaughtered uh, versus not hearing God's name before they were slaughtered. I mean, it makes no difference to the animal. That The animal doesn't even understand what you're talking about. You know, these animals can't conceptualize human language to any depth. I mean, you're making these very far out strong claims that animals know when you're saying God's name before they die and they, they're on this mission for God and, you know, they're, they're just willingly sacrificed in God's name. Um, you know, these are all, I, I consider these delusions, I, I consider this delusional. You know, applying this to the sh in the human context will just sound psychopathic. It sounds psychopathic in the animal context anyway. These claims that animals have no fear, that this is 
great treatment and they understand and are willing to be sacrificed. They, these all are without evidence. The evidence shows otherwise. I mean, just looking at that with a sober mind, it just looks like you're dominating animals. They're, they're frozen with fear and then you're just slashing their throat open and letting them bleed out. There's no, There's nothing ethical about that. There's nothing religious about that. There's nothing loving about that. There's nothing compassionate about that. That is just cold-blooded murder. And if God created these animals to desire life and to want to live, it makes zero sense that he'd also create them as food, you know, to be slaughtered. I think these uh, religious texts should be questioned. Uh, At the end of the day, you can believe in God, you know, have your belief in your religion. I just don't like when these religious beliefs are used to take away either human rights or animal rights. I think that should always be questioned. Again, you can be a Muslim vegan, you can be a Christian vegan, you can be a Hindu vegan. You know, there's no doctrine of religion that mandates killing animals. There's just, you know, there's loopholes. And if you truly want to respect animals, if you truly want to respect God's creation, if you truly want to respect Earth and its inhabitants, then live a vegan lifestyle. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.